What's going on, everybody? Welcome. This is Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. Today, Andrew and I are talking about the martial arts industry and one of my favorite analogies, the bucket of crabs. <laughs> if you're listening rather than watching this episode, you didn't just see the wonderful humorous element that we threw in there. If you want to watch, check it out on YouTube, of course. If you're new to the show, man, this is a weird one for you to come in on, but welcome. We do a bunch of stuff for martial arts and for martial artists. And if you want to see all the things that we do, go to whistlekick.com. You're going to find a lot of stuff over there. For example, we've got a blog. You can sign up for the newsletter. You can get links to everything that we do because we do a lot of things. This is a, kind of a crazy list. And we also have a store. In the store, what are you going to find? Sparring gear, uh, sweatshirts, and hats, and all kinds of cool stuff. And if you use the code PODCAST15, it gets you 15% off, helps us connect the dots at this show, leads to some sales, which, you know, it's business. If you run a business, you understand. It's marketing. we got to do these sorts of things to connect the dots and know what's happening. Now, if you want to go deeper on the show, if you want to check out other episodes, things like that, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. That's where you're going for that. You can also sign up for the newsletter over there. there there's transcripts, like tons of stuff. Now, if you really love what we do, Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. We give exclusive content, stuff you're not going to find anywhere else. So if you say, hey, you know, I really like what you guys do. And I, once in a while, I can find $2 in my pocket. You could sponsor us at $2 a month. And for $2 a month, we're going to give you behind the scenes who's coming up on the show, as well as a bunch of other updates. And the more you are willing to throw our way, the more we are going to throw your way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Bucket of crabs. Yeah. I would like to preface. Okay. You said for a new guest, new listener, sorry, this might be a weird episode to come in on. I would challenge that statement. Mm -hmm. I think this would be a great first episode because it's going to give a good ethos on what our philosophy is on what we're about to talk about, which I think is an important topic. You are right. I, I rescind that comment. Yeah. And I think maybe more importantly... I think it gives them an idea that we are not always serious. That is true. Which yeah. is important. Th that is. We yeah. can be silly. Yeah. I often tell people growing old, mandatory. Growing up, optional. <laughs> Very true. I think we both exemplify that. Yeah. And I'm good with it. It's probably why we're friends. Okay. The bucket of crabs analogy. And mm. I assumed everyone knew this analogy. Everyone does not know this analogy. So let me share the analogy. A bucket of crabs. If you've worked at a restaurant that sells crabs, you know that within reason, you don't have to put a top on the bucket. Why is that, Jeremy? Because the moment one of them gets an arm over the edge and is about to get out, the rest of them will pull back in because they're all trying to climb out as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if these were people and they had problem solving skills, they would say, okay, you get up there and then we're going to make a human chain and yep. you could figure this out, right? Like there would be a way. But the crabs almost never get out of the bucket. It's not a perfect analogy, but it works within the context of martial arts. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to talk about that because I think until we are willing to change this broadly in our industry, we are held back. Okay, so let me throw some information out there. There are roughly 250 million people who train martial arts in the world. Yeah. When I really dug into these numbers in the early days of Whistlekick, as we were trying to gain funding, these numbers were important. So they're stuck in my head. It was roughly 5% of the world population mm -hmm. at that time. In the United States... Our martial arts participation at that time, best estimate, showed half that number, somewhere between two and three percent. Hmm. Why? I believe it's because within the United States, we are even more bucket of crabby than in other places in the world. If you're not connecting the dots on what I mean by extending this analogy to the martial arts, think of things like the joke. 
How many martial artists does it take to change a light bulb? Now, I'm going to guess many of you, probably even most of you, have heard that joke. And if you <clears> haven't, <throat> you probably have a guess. Andrew, the answer is? Uh, I actually have not heard the You've joke. You've really not heard this? I've one? really okay. not heard the joke. Okay. How many martial artists does it take to screw in a light bulb? Um, I would guess some sort of funny joke about X number to do it and X number to critique how they're doing it. That's my guess. One. A hundred, one to do it, ninety nine to say that's not how my instructor would do it. Yeah, okay, you know some some variation of that. And the fact that you hadn't heard the joke, and we didn't set that up ahead of time. Yeah. But the fact that you knew that's where the joke would go is a perfect indication of our culture and the fact that we can't get out of our own way. Yeah. And until we get yeah. out of our own way, the things that we all want, which is broader involvement in the martial arts, mm -hmm. more money coming into the industry, so we could have actual competitive martial arts where people make real money, yeah. Okay, um, it's not gonna change. So how do we change it? I wanna talk about how we change it. Okay. I wanna talk about more of where it comes from. And I wanna talk about how some of you out there, honestly, probably most of you are contributing to it. Okay. Perhaps realizing it or not, yes. Whether or not you realize yeah. it, absolutely. <clears throat> yep. The bucket of, a, of crabs analogy can be best boiled off in language to holding someone back so they don't go beyond you. Mm -hmm. Now, literally, I've known martial arts instructors who do this. More broadly, we tend to look at other martial artists with a critique mind first. And there's a healthy element in there. How do we get better at what we do? Mm -hmm. We critique ourselves. We critique each sure. other. Sure. If you're an instructor, criticism is a, a important part of what you do. If you're an instructor and you stand at the front of the room and you watch everyone do things and you just say, great, which I've been in those classes. They're terrible. And so are the students. And you don't get much out of it. And you get nothing mm -hmm. out of it because yeah. my goal is to always get a little bit better when I train. Some of us are so hellbent on finding that criticism that we will apply it where it doesn't need to be applied. Mm. Movies, TV. Well, you know, I really didn't blah, 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 like that thing technique. What? Okay, it's a, it's a movie. Yeah, it's TV. No, it's, it's not meant to be real. What? You can't just watch and enjoy it. Now, that doesn't mean that when I watch a, a fight scene in a movie that I'm not picking it apart, mm -hmm. but I can still enjoy it. I can watch it for the entertainment value and I can watch it for the technical value. Mm -hmm. Okay. If, you're, not, you're not watching it as a how to. <laughs> no. Right? That's, it's totally when I, a different thing. When I watch John Wick, <laughs> that's not, not training. Yeah, absolutely. It's mm -hmm. not, it's not. I'm not watching those movies the way a pro athlete might watch game footage. Game footage. Yep, sure. It's, it's not the same thing. So if we if we take the next step with that, okay. So we're all we we watch, we critique, we observe. Where's the positive? Where's the hey? You know what? You did really well with that. Mm. What happens? If the people around you, if all of your engagements with them are critical, they're negative, what you, tends to happen over time? Well, I mean, you start to get a bad rep feeling for yourself on everything you do. And how did they respond? The person you critiqued, you mean? Yeah. Oh, it never goes well. Like, they're, they get defensive immediately. Like, that's the first thing. And if people around you are used to being critiqued by you in an unhealthy way. Yeah, they just stop doing that stuff around you. They go away. Yeah. I believe, through my observation, that the general tone, this critical tone, is not some well-kept secret. People outside the martial arts know that we pick on each other mm -hmm. a lot. We've talked about people not wanting to pick the wrong school. So they'll pick no school. We've talked mm. about that on multiple episodes. Yeah. But how about 
that group of people over there does a thing that I really like, but I don't want to be part of their negative attitude on life. Yeah, sure. Because if you observe a group of martial artists being martial artists, talking about martial arts, and your observation is that the majority of what they're talking about in a mixed group of martial artists, which is, you know, the, the public face of all of us collectively, mm -hmm. it's, it's mixed and it's negative. Uh, I'm going to go over here and uh, do yoga, archery, something weightlifting, else. Yeah. make sauerkraut. I don't know. Whatever. Literally anything. Anything else. Because I don't want to step into a group of people who treat what I perceive to be the most accomplished, best, et cetera, with hate and disdain. Yeah. It's it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And the that attitude has now extended because social media has extended this into literally everything. And it makes it so much easier now. To, so much easier to do. Yeah. I see people who use their rank title as part of their social media name being complete jackals about martial arts and non-martial arts. <clears throat> yep. Do I want to go train with that person? Does anybody? If you're a parent, do you want to put your child in in that school with someone who can't seem to help but complain and argue with everyone on social yeah. media? If, if you don't know any better, sure. But if you know any better, no, of course not. If you're aware of those things happening, oh, yeah. no, you're unlikely to do that. So yeah. this <clears throat> attitude leads to fewer people participating in martial arts. Fewer people participating in martial arts means the size of the martial arts economy is smaller. It also means that people outside of it are less likely to contribute mm -hmm. financial resources into it. What is, maybe not every, but every, econo every economist's rule of growing an economy, but mine too are stop the outflow of money, gain the inflow of money. Yep. Okay. Number two in this context, let's get, I don't know, here's a bad example for health, but Coca-Cola to sponsor some big tournament. You know, you go to Battle of Atlanta, Coca-Cola is <clears throat> based in Atlanta, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and, and this year we've got $10,000 grand championship financial awards courtesy of Coca-Cola plunking down, I don't know, 5 million or something, whatever, right? Sweet. Now more people will come and they'll participate and there'll be better competition. Mm -hmm. And we know from context that more better competition brings everybody yeah. up. Rising, and Rising tide raises all ships. Exactly. And we know that if I, as a high level competitor, could make 10K a month or more mm -hmm. competing, maybe that can become my job and I can become that much better. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, you know, people will, this is where people point to things like MMA, they'll point to the Reebok sponsorship of the UFC. And, and there are some examples there. But if you're, if you're thinking that, that that is a counterpoint, you don't fully understand that Reebok sponsorship deal. I, I know the numbers there, hmm. not off the top of my head, but I've looked into them. And it's something like 20 to 30k for the average fighter. Mm -hmm. And they're picking up a few of those fights a year. That doesn't add up. Yeah, and you have a whole team money. keeping you put together and yeah. you really don't have time for a full-time job. Like they're scraping. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not making Connor money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I keep coming back in my mind to these examples that I'm not going to share because they're really personal of people stepping on each other. And, and I've been a victim of this even since Whistlekick came out. Show me an example of where I was trying to step on anybody's toes. Mm -hmm. It doesn't exist. Everything that we have done and everything I individually have done has been in an effort to grow and support the martial <clears throat> arts community and, yeah, hopefully make a few bucks in the process. Everybody wins. I mm -hmm. try to find that everybody wins business, uh, business model. 
So let me turn it over to you because I've been I've been talking. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's let's hear some some stuff from you. So maybe I can. So respond. I have a couple of thoughts. You know, one of the things you mentioned early on was that we here in the United States tend to have a little bit more of that attitude of, you know, talking down to people and or you know it's it's just a little more prevalent here. And I think it all stems from how did our country get founded, mm. right? Our country was founded by saying we don't like what you're doing. We're going to go do our own thing. Mm -hmm. And we think that our own thing is going to be better. Mm -hmm. And that's our culture. I mean, that, I mean, yeah, granted that happened in, you know, the 1770s, you know, um, you know, a couple hundred years ago, but, but those roots, but that, are those still, roots absolutely. of how that, this is how our country got founded. And so we are used to that sort of thing. And that carries over into so many aspects mm -hmm. of our culture, you know, uh, you know, I most listeners know I'm involved in bagpipe bands and here in the United States, often group A within an organization, within a band gets upset and they leave and they form their own brand new band and try and make their own thing happen. And in fact, I know one area in the United States where that happened. And so some people left and formed the new band. Those same people got upset at the new band and went off and formed another band. And so within a very small geographic area, now there's three bands that all have problems with each other. Mm -hmm. Whereas in, I won't say all other parts of the world, but we're speaking with some friends from Canada and they're like, you know what? In Canada, that doesn't happen. If Joe Schmo is in this organization and doesn't like it, they go just join this other organization that's already, that already exists rather than trying to form their own thing, mm -hmm. thinking that their thing's going to be better. Right. But that's our culture. Yeah, it is. And that's a good point. And, we see that same thing happen in martial arts all schools, the time. You know, it, it doesn't make it right, but that's what happens. You didn't promote me fast enough. You didn't this, that you yep. did this or that. I'm going to go start my own school. And they pull some of the students. And now both schools go under because there isn't enough money. Exactly where I was going. With and this. everybody's unhappy. Yep. It happens all the time because people would rather be right than be happy. Right in quotes for those yeah. not watching. Yeah. Would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Mm -hmm. Would you rather have students and train and teach and, and people around you? Or would you rather not deal with anybody else's stuff yeah. and be alone with no students? I think if we look hard enough, even at our own instructors, we can find something wrong. We can find a place where oh, they sure. failed us. We could probably find, I don't think I have one for you. But if I look at the people in my life, I could probably find something that every one of them has done that hurt me. Yeah. I mean, not me because I'm perfect. You are perfect. You are. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, but and I think even. But do when, I look for that? Do I hone no, in no. on that? I try not to. And there are times where it's really tempting, yep. especially when you feel really hurt from something and you're vulnerable. I've had a rough year. There yep. are a bunch of people that didn't show up. Yep. Do I cut them out of my life or do I try to rebuild? Yeah. Well, and I think everyone who's watching or listening likely trains in martial arts. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have studied any length of time with any number of instructors, this may not per pertain to slightly newer practitioners or mm -hmm. someone who's only had one instructor for their career. But there, I have had three major schools and instructors that I have trained with, mm -hmm. and not one of them was perfect. In, and mm. I don't mean as a person. I mean, like, there were things about the first school that they did that I, I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And there are things about the second school that were better, but they didn't do this other thing. It's like, mm, I don't, I, I yeah. stuck with it because I enjoyed what I was doing and it was fine. Yep. And same thing with the school I'm at now. There were things that would be nice if we did differently, but that's okay. That's just the way it is. Yep. You can look for reasons to be happy or you can look for reasons to be unhappy. And my thought is, if you have the opportunity to train, and you are learning, and you are around other people who are of like mind, that's what matters. Yeah. If you focus your energy, your attention, your time on things that are not good, that cannot be fixed, it's wasteful. Shut up and train. Yeah. There was a great post I've seen recently on Facebook, uh, <clears throat> and I'm going to paraphrase because I'm not going to remember it exactly, sure. but it was 
if you're essentially if your martial art espouses to be one of making yourself a better person and then you spend your time pulling other people down you're kind of there's kind of an issue there right that's the one that was and so that, that I was said? by yeah jeremy leslie yeah. act right i don't know the exact always, words but if you espouse the virtues of the character building virtues qualities of martial arts and then spend time tearing other people down you clearly miss the point or something like that yeah yeah it's weird when quotes from me show up on social media because but, but that's i'll such... jot them down and i send them to the team and you know it could be weeks or months or honestly even years yeah. later that they get used and i'm like oh that's a really good quote yeah <laughs> but that one is very valid to this argument that we're talking it about is. right now like if you you know if you're martial art if you espouse that it's supposed to be character building and helps you be a better person and then you spend your time talking bad about other people. You definitely did miss the point. I came up in an era where part of earning a black belt meant you weren't a dill. Yep. And the sad part is a lot of the people who were giving out, who were, were um, responsible for overseeing rank progression back then, the very people who were not my instructors personally, but of the contemporaries of my instructors are now the people being dill holes today mm. like in the loudest way you you forgot your own lessons yeah yeah shut up and train shut up and teach just and if you're not willing to do those two things just shut up because you're holding the rest of us back mm -hmm. yeah i am and i've said it before i will say it again i will not stop saying it. i am hell-bent on helping the martial arts move forward in every way that you can interpret that statement economically um numbers pop culture reputation re reputation all of all of it <clears throat> and i'm going to do everything i can to do that and so one of the things that has to happen is those of you who are willing to get in the way have to move and the, the more resources we get behind us the more likely we are to spend resources to help you move along Right now, it's asking. Right now, it's, you know what? I want you to recognize that this thing you claim to love, martial arts, you're not helping it in doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Worry about your own house. You worry about your own students. You worry about your own training. And other people will fall in line. Set the example. Don't sit in the bucket and say, you don't deserve to get out. You don't deserve to be free you don't deserve to do it that way your rank is yeah. wrong lineage blah 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 because who died and made you boss nobody. i'm with you nobody get out of the way let the rest of us move forward i agree anything else no i think that's good okay now you got something you want to add let's do it a couple places you can do that one our Facebook group, Whistle Kick Martial Arts Radio Behind the Scenes. In fact, that's the best place. If this episode has come out, which if you're watching or listening to it, it's out. Because I don't think we get hacked for our content. No. At least not yet. That's the best place. So go find it over there. You can leave a comment there. Those uh, um, discussions don't get closed. We have people adding to them periodically, mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Okay. Two, you can leave a comment over on the website, whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. While you're there, Check out transcripts, photos, videos, links, sign up for the newsletter, and consider supporting us on Patreon, patreon.com slash whistlekick. We do the things that we do for the martial arts industry. They cost money. Your assistance in offsetting those costs is helpful. We are not yet a profitable business. We will get there. Someday. Someday. And that's why we do all the different things we do because, you know, they slowly move up and, you know, the... That transitional point is in sight. It's, it's over there. It's not here. It's over there, but it's in sight. If you want to follow us on social media, we're at Whistlekick. Remember, we've got training programs at whistlekickprograms.com, including the free Flex program. If you want to email us, Andrew at whistlekickmartialartsradio.com, Jeremy at whistlekick.com, we're, we're good. So until next time, train, train hard, hard, smile, and have, have a great day. day.